previously on Big Brother. Hey guys, what's up? JT here, and it's time for another video. It's time for my brand new series all about season 19 of Big Brother. Every week, I'm going to be talking about why the latest house guest was evicted from the Big Brother house. I got this idea while I was listening to Rob Has a Podcast um, and his talks with David Bloomberg for Survivor Game Changers. What I have done is, uh, similar to Mr. Bloomberg, is I have created six rules or um, six ways to win Big Brother. Um, and these are six things that you would need to do constantly while you're playing this game in order to not be evicted. Uh, each week I'm gonna go over why the most recent evicted house guests broke each of these rules and talk about why they were evicted from the Big Brother house. So as we all know, the first house guest evicted, he was evicted on premiere night and he was kinda up on my list as one of my favorites and that is Cameron. So, let's talk about Cameron and rule number one, which is to plot and to scheme. I First of all, before we even get started, I want to say that Cameron got the shitty end of the stick. His stick wasn't as shitty as Glenn's and Jody's, but he did get a pretty, pretty, pretty shitty end of the stick. So now let's talk about uh, rule number one, which is the plot and scheme. After Christmas, Jillian and Cameron went into the dining room and each voted on how they wanted to um, deal with the eviction. If I was in Cameron's shoes, I would have campaigned to single people or duos. I wouldn't have campaigned to these large groups of guys, which is exactly what he was doing for a lot of it. For at least what we saw. And you have to remember that we also are victims of the edit because the live feed hadn't started yet, so we don't know what com what other conversations could have gone on. Uh, but from what I saw, it seems like he was he was he was doing a half-assed campaign, to be honest with you. Hey guys, keep me safe is not campaigning. I don't care how early in the game it is or how late in the game it is. When you're campaigning for someone to keep you in the game, you need to have something to offer them. You need to give them a reason instead of just, hey guys, you should keep me in the house. You know, don't evict me. That's not campaigning. Rule number two, make alliances, but play your own game. Cameron didn't have any alliances. I don't even remember seeing him like really even start to talk to anybody. Maybe like a little something here or there, but I don't I don't remember. And I granted I know it's day one, but and and there's and like I said, he got the shit under the stick and playing this game and we're knowing this game so well he knows that you don't need to be making alliances first day in. But I don't even think he was even starting to build relationships first day in. I feel like a major opportunity for him would have been when he was talking to Paul uh, to uh, earn, you know, to tempt Paul into giving him a friendship bracelet. He he played that wrong. Instead of, I think he should have been more like, "Hey, yo, I know this game very well. You are a huge threat. I'm gonna keep you in the house as long as possible because the longer that you're in the house." The bigger target is on you, the less of a target is on me. So you can, I can guarantee you, you'll never go up if I have anything to say with it. See, if I have anything to do with it. I don't think he played Paul right. If he, that, that conversation should have been way different. Rule number three is to win comps and use your powers to your advantage. I do think that if he was still in the house that he would have done really good in mental, uh, in, in some of the mental comps as well as maybe even some of the physical comps. Now, the comp that he did play, you know, the one with those sexy ass snakes. See what I did there? Um, anyway, in the comp that he did play, he made a horrible mistake by just jumping off. He should have just jumped off. I don't care how much of a threat you don't want to be or how much you want to try to keep it under cover of how physical you are. If you're at risk of going home, you don't just jump off of a comp and take a wild guess on which apple it is. And then, if, and if you are gonna do that and jump off of a comp, 
have hopefully you would have remembered the clues before you decided to do that and knew exactly which outfit you're gonna get because you remembered the clues that you already already given. I do think they were kind of screwed and that they weren't given enough clues as well. But that's just my personal opinion. Rule number four is use the twist to your advantage. Uh, in my opinion, look, I'm here to play Big Brother. I'm here to win $500,000, but I'm also here to win everything else along the way that I can. You know, so I, I think I personally, I think he should have took the $25,000, but that's just me. <laughs> And like I said before, I do think that he should have used Paul more to his advantage. He really could have exploited the idea of Paul being a fan favorite, of Paul being a comp threat, of Paul being a social game threat, and really use that to his advantage. If he would, if he would have played Paul right, he would still be in the house, bottom line. Rule number five is to play with the end in mind. Now, the Steve and Ian winter curse has finally come back and bit someone in the ass. I also think that he should have told them that he was a microbiologist. I think he should have kept that secret, at least for now. Anything like that, like, yo, I'm a microbiologist, or hey, I'm actually a multi-million dollar business owner, or, half the town works for me like that kind of thing are the kinds of things you keep to yourself and you use those as bits of trust later on in the game when you need someone to do something for you or when you need to get yourself out of a pickle and build trust with someone those are the little secrets that you keep to yourself going into the big brother house and then you use those as you know little crumbs of hey I need you to do this for me so I'm gonna tell you a little something about myself that no one else in this house knows to show that I trust you and that you should trust me too. So as far as jury management goes he really didn't have a chance to do anything he's not on the jury so he didn't have a chance to make any idea or make any moves that would affect this rule. All in all Cameron lost due to a big brother twist that was out of his control. Some people do get screwed over with these twists, and Cameron happens to be one of those guys. So, uh, like I said, I hope that there is a battle back, and I hope that we can get to see Cameron play Big Brother. Now, let's talk about my predictions. Now, I am sure all of you guys know about the first in curse. Uh, the first person uh, to step foot inside the Big Brother game every season uh, has not won their season, for the exception of Rachel Riley. Um, she was first in of her first season, but she was not the first in of her second season, and she won her second season, but she damn sure lost the first season. This season, the first person in the house was Alex Ow. So Alex will not be winning Big Brother. <laughs> the way that Julie was talking about the Big Brother swap, I don't think that this is going to be the end of that. Now, I'm not sure if there's going to be another one this season, um, but I'm pretty sure this isn't the end of the Big Brother swap. Now, I hope the swaps come later on in the game in the future. I really would like to see another Big Brother swap this season, maybe about halfway through, um, maybe like two members into the jury. We also have the whole temptation thing going on this season, so maybe it, maybe the consequence of someone accepting a temptation brings them back in the house. That is it for today's video, guys. So if you guys like what I'm doing and you guys like this new Big Brother series, then give this video a huge thumbs up. Down in the comments below, tell me who you voted for to get the Pendant of Protection and why. I'm gonna write a nice long little comment about why I voted for Josh, um, even though I know he's going to be evicted next week. Um, and make sure you guys follow me on uh, social media. That's Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram at jcadence. Or you can like my Facebook fan page, Jordan JT Tranberg. If you want to see other cool videos like this one, then you can click on the little eye right up here. It should be up here somewhere. Make sure you click on that. And make sure that you guys subscribe to me. If you haven't subscribed to me, click on the little green subscribe button down at the bottom of the screen. I don't know which side it's on, but I know it's down there somewhere. If you want to see other cool stuff from me, like my 7 People You Meet series, or my Interesting Facts series, or if you want to see me trying British snacks, then you can keep calm and click on the blue screen. Thank you so much, guys, for watching my videos. I'm going to go edit this video right now so I can get up as soon as possible. Uh, remember, a thumbs up means you like me, and a subscribe means you love me, and I love you too.
too. And I'll see you guys next time.